Welcome back to the Fine Home Building 2022 house. We are talking about insulation today, Joe. Yeah. Today we're installing rock wool. We've kind of been doing rock wool on the whole project. It started sub slab, basement walls, and now we're getting ready to do the cavities. We're using a R23 bat. We have it in two different sizes. We have some for 24 inch center and some for 16 inch center. And paired with the Zip R6, we're shooting for about an R29 on that. And then for the back side of the roof deck, we're gonna have an R46. And we like it for many reasons, but one, it's vapor open. Yes. And that's kind of where we're putting everything on. Yeah, when you build a tight house, you, you're not just keeping the outdoor air from coming in and the pollen and all the pollutants. You're also keeping in what's in your house. So every shower you take, every pasta meal that you make, uh, that humidity is collected in the house and we need to manage that. So anything that we can do to sort of protect our risk and the client's comfort is a win. What is stone wool? So it's basically basalt, which is a rock, superheated and then spun like cotton candy to make this sort of fibrous matrix. When we went and toured the factory, that's basically it. Um, they press it down and that's how they get their different densities. This is going to cut back on your thermal convection as well as, I mean, this is not an inviting home for pests. No mice, no snakes. They don't want to eat it. It's, it's rocks. It's highly fire resistant. You know, you use concrete siding and this on your exterior of a house, say in California or a wildfire area, you're going to have a real bulletproof assembly. So there's a couple of different ways you can calculate how much insulation for you need for the job. Travis and I prefer to do it off the plans because then we don't have to do it in the field. So what we'll do is we'll calculate our exterior walls. We we'll use the elevation to determine how much our wall height is. And then that also kind of helps us with the game plan overall of like, okay, well this is our insulation line throughout the house, which is also our air barrier. You can deduct for windows, but typically we won't because we'll just use that excess material for fire blocking, stuffing little nooks and crannies throughout the house. And you never want to be short. Yeah, never, especially if it's something you're ordering. Right. Uh, and since we use it on other jobs, it's good to have some extra around anyway. So before you start any insulation project, you need to do a few things to get yourself ready to install. We talk a lot about personal protective equipment or PPE. Joe, what's the appropriate PEPE for this install? Pretty simple, and it's all stuff you can get at your local hardware store. So you want to wear gloves. That day, you really should wear long pants and long shirt, and then uh, safety glasses and a good dust mask. I will say, to be honest, we do a lot of insulation. The Rockwell product generally settles quickly. It doesn't hang in the air. We don't always uh, wear all this stuff, and we really should. So I'm going to follow the manufacturer's recommendations. There are still some particles in the air, and when you're sweeping up, it's just good practice to wear all that. How do you cut and install rock wool, Joe? Yeah, I mean, you with a tape measure and a saw, basically, right there. Because it is a stone wool product, we're gonna use a specialty knife for that. It's got a serrated edge. One side of this is for the comfort bat and one side is for the rigid board. So uh, really basic hand tools, cut it fit, maybe cut it a quarter inch bigger than you need it and uh, then stuff it in the cavity and make sure that you're always slicing around wires. One of the reasons that we switched to Rockwell early on was that we can see with an instant look whether or not the install was completed properly. There's not a paper facing stapled over it that conceals all the work and hides whether or not you really did a good job tucking in around the boxes. You really immediately know uh, if it was tucked in around the way you want it. So we're gonna go for uh, full coverage in all of our cavities because that's how you stop that convective looping. And that's another advantage to Rockwell because of the density of the product. It doesn't really allow for any convective looping through the product. If you filled that cavity, there's no air moving up or down, it's dense. What about little infill like this? Well, you know, you don't wanna cut up a full bat to do it in each individual one, so you can use your cutoffs. And you don't wanna stuff it in there like you're trying to fill as much insulation in that cavity as possible. You still wanna salt follow the same practice you would like say for a wall yeah. but you know you piece it in there and that helps on efficiency with the material and then you know if we have excess you can also use it in between the floor joists between floors because it's good product there's no reason to put it in the landfill we use it in the house there's a, a lot of ways to use it up and make sure that you get the maximum benefit for your client so we want to talk about the different insulation products we've used on this project because Obviously everyone was here for the under slab, 
and we did a lot of comfort board install there. That's the big sheets, the four by eight. We used a three inch product for our 12. And then under the steps, we built it up with a five inch product for our 20. But then what else do we do with the three inch product, Joe? Well, this is the same product that we use sub slab and we ran it right up our walls. So we actually, when we were getting ready to pour the slab, we had a little bit of this sticking up just mm -hmm. above where the slab was and that's for our thermal continuity. This is the comfort board and then we just adhered it straight to the concrete walls. So next we'll do, what we'll do is we'll go with our comfort bat and we'll do these cavities. We're only gonna do the two by six cavity, 24 on center, and it will go from the top plate down the wall. Yeah, our thermal bridges on this project are our double bottom plate, but that's stopped by the zip R. Yeah. And then inboard of that, we have total continuity of the thermal control layer from the slab, which is broken from the foundation, up the wall, over the top, and then that rim joist and that open web floor truss, that is where we talked about taking all of our cutoffs, all of our excess, what would be considered scrap, we're gonna infill that whole rim. So we're gonna have total thermal continuity.